If you'd like to, you can uh, make a solid sculpture instead of a container. Um, so this technique is a little bit harder. Um, you're, it's, it's a little bit more intimidating, I, I would say, is what, what really is the issue. Um, you can absolutely do it, but there's some subtleties, there's some timing things that are just a little less forgiving. Um, and like I said, a little intimidating. So I'm going to get this piece started. Um, and one of the things I have is reference photos. So I find it's really helpful to uh, make sure that you're looking at the thing you're trying to make. So if you try to make, I'm going to make a head. Um, if you try to make a head based on just uh, what you remember, that the trouble is you sometimes uh, you make assumptions about what you know, and it's not actually um, looking at the thing sometimes helps you be accurate in what that is you actually know. So I'm just kind of uh, starting to rough in where I want some features. And obviously this is a very square head right now, so I know I'm gonna be cutting quite a bit away. So I'm going to um, use my knife, I'm gonna use my loop tool, and I'm gonna be cutting in the, uh, the shapes and, and parts of, of the head. Now, if you are doing a head um, or an animal or something like that, it's also a real good idea to have, uh, besides reference photos, or besides one reference photo, to have multiple reference photos. So I, uh, I can see what the thing looks like from front and back. So I'm just kind of getting started here. Notice that I'm using my scoring tool um, to attach clay just to make sure it's stuck well but I'm not slipping because I'm working with clay straight out of the bag, so it's still pretty wet. Um, and then I'm gonna start just kind of shaping in roughly where stuff goes, but I'm not super tied to these. So if it turns out I've made a mistake, I wanna be able to uh, make some changes, right? And, uh, and I actually don't have a reference photo for the back right in front of me, um, so I may have to go uh, either take a break and get one or um, go look at some people, uh, look at my husband's head or something like that as I'm working. So the issue here um, is that you are gonna make your sculpture uh, solid to begin with. So right now um, in, in the other set of videos that I've recorded in for previous quarters, I had uh, an armature inside. And so if you're making a sculpture without an armature, which means without some sort of extra support inside, the issue is that you don't have that stability built in. You see how this guy's wobbling around a lot. That's fine, um, but you need to be aware of not doing big undercuts. So I'm gonna try to get under here a little bit and get a neck going, but big heavy clay on top of clay that doesn't have any uh, support in it is going to want to fall over. Necks are, necks are usually done on armatures for that reason because you need to have that support. Now there's a couple of, of tricks you can do and one of those is you can put other stuff down there. So a big collar or a, um, a bunch of hair that, uh, you know, we know that hair is soft, but if you make hair out of clay, it's going to be heavy and hard, which means it can support weight. Um, so I, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of getting the, the head shape in here. I'm using the paddle. Um, uh, if you don't have a paddle, um, you can use your, your rolling pin for some sizes. Um, the, something like this is all right, but the nice thing about a paddle or a wooden spoon is that you get a little bit more, uh, weight to help you, uh, you know, uh, sorry, not weight, leverage to help you with the, the shaping the, the thing. <clears throat> so I am uh, going to keep working on roughing in some of this shape here, and it's going to take me a while um, because I started out with a square and heads aren't square. You can see that I'm moving clay from one place to another. You can see that I keep turning it so that I can see uh, the different sides as I'm working. You can see that I have the eyes kind of roughed in, and one of the things with the eyes, if you are doing human sculpture, is we often uh, get used to looking, particularly in a, in a online class, we get used to looking at just the front of the face and we forget about the side view. So um, if you look at the side view of a person, this part of their face is farther back than this part here, right? 
um, and that eyeball that I haven't added in is set back into the head. So this particular person that I'm looking at as my example has their mouth wide, has his mouth wide open, um, which is relevant. Um, but then it also pushes out his cheeks a little bit. And so his cheeks are, or uh, not his cheeks, like his jowls, like right here, get pushed out a little bit. But even that, I, from the front, it looks, it's sort of round. But in the, in real life, those cheeks are back a bit, right? His jowls come back over here rather than being far forward. So as I said, a head or a solid sculpture is quite a bit harder, um, in my opinion. It's harder to do uh, just because it, it's got, you got a lot of things to think about, right? You've got the depth and the width and the, the, all the different dimensions, and you're probably trying to make it look like something in particular. Now, if you'd like to start out and do a more abstract sculpture that doesn't look like something in particular, um, that's totally fine. Um, and that might be a good way to begin. So I'm going to show, I've shown you kind of the starting point here, but what's going to happen next, I'm going to direct you to some other videos because my clay is too wet on Sunday and you need to see this stuff. So I'm going to keep working on this, but uh, when I'm done, when I've got the shape basically where I want it, when I've got the eyes in or I've got the, some of the texture how I want it, and, and this is one that you're going to texture, oops, this is one, the solid sculpture, you'll actually put the texture on first, or at least you'll put most of the texture on first. Then once I'm done, I'm actually going to slice it in half. I'm going to use my wire tool. I'm going to let this get leather hard. I'm going to slice it in half. And what I'll probably do is actually slice this twice. I'll probably cut a line here and take off his head. And then I might cut a line between the nose and the mouth. I don't want to cut across the mouth because there's details there. And I'm going to take each of those pieces apart and hollow him out. But I show you that better in, the, in another set of videos that I'll direct you to.